Yeah, so it's an honor to, to introduce Kirill, who will speak on compact generation of fungi. Yeah, well, thanks for organizing the seminar. Um, I'd like to speak here. Okay, so I'm going to talk about compact generation of this uh, case of uh, G modules on the stack fungi. Um, so the plan of the talk is um, anyone see it from yeah, in the Zoom? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the plan is. Um, so first, I will say some um, few words about um, um, incoherent shifts and um, um, modules. So I'm going to talk about the modules in like non-standard setting, that is um, the modules and stacks, and um, sort of the natural um, uh, theory for this is uh, the theory of incoherent shifts and um, the theorem stack. Then, um, uh, then I will review some generalities. On compact generation. Did you catch that? Is there are some examples? And so in the end, uh, in the end, I will apply all of this to uh, the map. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's talk about incoherent sheets and new modules. Um, so we're going to study uh, um, incoherent sheets on the module from sufficiently general uh, stacks. So I want to recall that um, the most uh, general uh, geometric objects in derived algebraic geometry are uh, so-called three stacks. So they're simply uh, three sheets on um, affine schemes. So affine means already derived. Uh, so they take values in spaces. But in order to talk about incoherent shifts, they need to impose some uh, finiteness conditions. So I will say that um, X is um, locally finite type. Um, if X used as a functor from as a functor like this, um, uh, takes um, basic limits like all basic limits um, to different for limits. So what it, what it means is that um, alternatively, I can think of X as a functor, simply covariant functor from the category of they can accept differential variable algebra, so simply some commutative algebras. And then um, commuting the filtered co -filtered limits of uh, affine schemes is the same as commuting the filtered co limits of, of algebras. But the category of connected differential variable algebras is generated under filtered co limits by some compact objects, and that would be equivalent um, uh, for X to be written as a co limit. Uh, U. Many stacks where each um, U is stack A um, and A uh, is of uh, finite type. Finite type considered as an object of um, uh, connected uh, simply of the or differential to the Okay, so you think I'll have this one? Um, okay, so um, so now uh, uh, yeah, equivalent to finite type for for just schemes. We need finite type for what? I'm sorry, what's the question? But is locally finite type going to be equivalent to just 
be able to finish in no no so if x is a, a direct scheme uh, we say that um, uh, x uh, is uh, finite type uh, if um, x is uh, locally uh, finite type plus uh, plus impact. This is the standard uh, definition of material scheme in, in any algebra geometry textbook. It must not only be sort of locally presented by finite type schemes, but also be quite compact. So there are only finitely many of them. Um, so okay, in this situation, uh, um, I will, by the way, introduce the patient just for to repeat many times. Uh, my finite type finite type of T uh, and um, locally finite type for this thing. Um, okay, so when X is a scheme of finite type, there is a uh, remarkable category of uh, interfering shifts, namely, so definition, I first will define what the theorem shift is. So um, uh, let's say X is finite type. Um, and I- Sorry, can I just ask, I, uh, since we're doing derived algebraic geometry now, is this, um, what, if, what if I have a, a connective computer DG algebra that's unbounded? So that's already almost, it that's, could not, be, that's not finite type. It's like almost finite almost type. Fine. So, so this those implications also work for almost a finite type things. But this definition doesn't include such things. This definition does not include such things. Okay. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't need them for the talk. Um, I think it's also the way implication shifts are set up in in, in, in the first paper of this program. So that we begin with finite type schemes. Um, okay, so for X of finite type, I say that F uh, inside Quasi coherent shifts X uh, is uh, coherent um, if uh, two conditions satisfied. Um, first, it's uh, bounded. F bounded. So if you think of it as a, a complex of um, uh, naive quasi coherent shifts uh, on X must be just a bounded complex. Um, or say its cohomology is bounded. Um, Sits with us within some finite range um, um, bounded. And in addition, um, uh, each cohomology uh, shifts, let me not like this, um, are coherent. So here it simply means that they are, uh, these cohomology shifts are going to be. Just discrete uh, quasi coherent shifts on the underlying classical scheme of X. And I say that they're coherent in the usual in the usual sense. So uh, so I let uh, go X inside quasi code X um, the uh, all category. Of uh, coherent objects. And so now this co is a small stable uh, DG category. Um, and um, I can consider the smallest uh, presentable G category, which contains co and is also closed under all fitted co limits. So that's called uh, inter. Um, so the profit speaking the definition, let's say you can say this is just uh, uh, pretty neat spectra um, on co x. Um, also just sort of the smallest DG category, smallest presentable. So presentable, but people means containing all of us. Well, it is. It's not. It's not quite a category of pre-sheets. It's, it's a subcategory. It's pre-sheets that preserve finite limits or something like that. 
Um, that's the free co completion, like under all co limits, but you're taking the co no, right, right, right. Sure. Yeah. So find it. Yeah. Like right exact. Find it. Yeah. Left exact. Yeah. Left. Left exact. Yeah. Well, yeah. Doesn't matter because both categories are presented. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. The smallest presentable category containing um, exact code and um, closed under. And closed on the fitted within it. Okay, so this is incoherent sheets on a binary text. So, in order to extend this to more general stacks, um, you need to establish some factoriality of this category. And so, it turns out that incoherent sheets have a very special uh, factoriality, which is somewhat similar to quasi coherent sheets, but um, sort of also uh, very different. Um, so, namely, uh, So suppose, um, um, say, uh, x, y is a map on what finite type schemes. So what I'm going to construct is I'm going to construct a certain uh, Going to construct a certain uh, trick pullback functor going from uh, into here and shifts. Why to into here and shifts? Next. So the way it's done is not entirely trivial, but it uses a certain fact from uh, classical fact from algebraic geometry, namely uh, Nagata complexification. So uh, given a map like this, um, uh, I can uh, factor it as a composition of an open embedding, it's called uh, into something x, uh, x bar, uh, followed by uh, a proper map. Let's call it J, call this, uh, Um, so now to construct this uh, pullback factor, you do uh, two things. You show that, um, um, yeah, so, um, um, for, for open, uh, 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 sorry, maybe, um, Okay, so let's say for open uh, J X uh, inside X bar, uh, there exists um, function G of a star from into energies on X bar from into energies on X. Um, so how can we understand this functor? Um, the basic fact is that any open map is eventually co-connected. So that the pullback uh, of a coherent of something coherent um, will be again coherent inside this category. And then I can just index that. Um, now uh, for proper uh, e going from x r to y. Um, uh, there exists a functor of me of a shape um, into hidden shapes on y to into hidden shapes on 
development from its development. So what is this function? Um, so uh, remember the Grotendix um, coherence of direct images theorem. If I have a proper map, then the direct image of any coherent sheet is again coherent. So there is a sort of there is a functor direct image defined in the other way, but uh, it is um, continuous and it has a right adjoint. So I define this as a right adjoint of the push forward. Um, so now in this situation, I just define um, 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 for a general yep. um, factorized as in start, we define as of the tree as the composition. First, I take the tree pullback along this one, then I take the pullback along this one. So, the other shape. Um, right, so, um, so another thing that also uh, always exists in the indoor hidden setting is um, um, given a map. Right, so schemes. There is also an intermediate direct image. So this implicated direct image is it's inherited from the uh, usual direct image of uh, on quasi computer sheets. Namely, um, I can take uh, the uh, push forward uh, of some coherent shape on X to Y, and this will no longer be coherent if uh, the map is not drawn. But uh, it will be sort of incoherent. And then I can just um, extend uh, the function to the incompletion of the case with coherent sheets. Um, and um, the basic concurrency is is um but I think that it's not that it's incoherent, it's that it's eventually it's the key thing is that it's eventually co-connected, right? So yeah, yeah, so it lands in like quasi coherent plus. I'm just sliding that with it. Yeah, yeah. It's just important here that inco plus equals q co plus. That's like the key thing. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't want to say it. But yeah, yeah, this is the basic this is more correct estimation. Yeah. Um so now um uh So our jointness uh, of uh, these functors is as follows. So for, uh, for open uh, J, you will be inside X. Um, but uh, it is an adduction like this. Um, this is the uh, so this is the left joint, this is the right joint. And uh, for proper J upper tree equals J upper star by definition here. Yes, yeah, this is also yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and now for proper map, for proper P, say, from X to Z, um, and the adjunction is like this. So I have um, given shapes of X, uh, and I have the function of controls, which is continuous. And now uh, this functor uh, P upper string is uh, inside the joint, essentially by the joint. Yes, yeah, so these are uh, two important functionalities that uh, I enjoyed by the category of input hidden sheets. So now, obviously, for uh, 
So now we know that, once we know that uh, for, um, for a say, you know, fixed diet, hopefully, I type, um, uh, so I present uh, the case equation. Yes, yes uh, the limit of in coherent shifts uh, on all u, where u is the final text in C mapping to, to x. And the limit is taken with respect to the shrink pullback. Right. Um, so that's it. Um, now, uh, uh, okay, so so for G modules, uh, uh, we will be studying big coherent sheets on a very uh, special stack called uh, the stack. So let's say um, X is a, a locally finite type free stack. Um, and I can define uh, a, new, a new free stack uh, called X run. So to define it, I, I need to define the function on uh, affine schemes. So how do I define it? I define it on some new um, by taking uh, simply all uh, points from the original uh, locally finite type free stack on the uh, underlying reduced scheme of uh, of you. So this defines a new uh, a new free stack. It's sort of by definition uh, locally uh, of finite type, and uh, I can consider the category of uh, each particular shape when I'm surrounded. And by the definition, this will be the category of uh, modules for X. Um, so uh, just a small uh, uh, remark about the construction. Um, uh, we always have the inclusion of that line reduced scheme inside you. Um, and this determines a map from uh, X to X and out, uh, going the other direction. So let me call it U. Um, so now uh, this map, um, so that you can think um, of X run as some kind of uh, stacky, very large, uh, important thickening of X. So in particular, it's sort of believable that this map kind of behaves like a proper map. It gives an equivalence to underlying topological spaces, and both things are of finite type. Um, so what uh, case Corey Rosenblum uh, established in the book, uh, in their book, is, uh, is the following, that um, the map uh, you X, X to num, um, uh, gives an adjunction in uh, interference shifts on X um, and interference shifts um, on X to num. So the, uh, the left adjoint will be just the direct image. Uh, and the right adjoint will be uh, the uh, shape pull back point. Um, so of course, uh, what goes really, what really goes into this uh, sort of construction is that uh, these functions are defined for all uh, sufficiently good pre-stacks, but in addition for sort of uh, maps of the type X to X drum, uh, there is an adjunction like this. Uh, and the sort of relevant property is that is the fact that somehow X drum is an important thickening of, of X. 
you could say the map is it's literally in proper in it's proper in, yeah in yeah. finite actually well, i think i think maybe extend maybe information some information properties from x um but uh yeah let's say um yeah so actually i'm not sure if this interview really uh, exists for any locally binary type stack um, let me maybe say just stack. Like so in stack. particular, there is a there is a cotangent complex and a deformation theory. Not flex. Do you, you mean like garden stack, like representable? Yeah. They, so, um, like so the minimum property is that the stack must have deformation theory, right. the cotangent complex. But say for for sufficiently good stacks, this property is satisfied. Um, so it gives this adjunction, and um, uh, we will just. Uh, Introduce the following notations for them for this uh, junction. So, by definition, uh, the right hand side is equivalent to the modules on X. Uh, so, I'll call this int and the mod, uh, and this I'll call uh, forget uh, uh, the mod. And um, and the idea here is that. Um, uh, let's say if X is a smooth scheme, then uh, the right-hand side can be considered as the category of uh, a differential or a differential uh, modules over the, the algebra differential operators uh, on X. And then the left adjoint is just given by tensoring with the algebra differential operators, and the right adjoint is given by forgetting. Um, and um, moreover, um, in general, this uh, forgetful uh, factor is it's continuous and it's uh, it's also conservative. So this adjunction is actually monadic. Um, so this is the monadic adjunction. So what's good about monadic adjunctions is that when some category is monadic over the other, and if I get to function preserves the preserve limits, then um, this monadic category will be uh, compactly generated if the uh, base category is completely generated. It will be completely generated by the images of the sort of monad, uh, by the image of compact objects under the monad. Um, yeah, so so this allows us to reduce uh, questions about compact generation of this category to compact questions about compact generation of this category. Uh, right, so um, let me now say a few words about uh, uh, compactly generated categories in general. So I'm going to uh, part two. Okay, so definition. Um, well, let's say we have a the same thing that you can do. Then I say um, that uh, some object in C uh, is compact um, if uh, the following function. So I'm taking the maps uh, inside C out of this object C uh, to something. So this is a function from uh, C to say spaces, um, and I want to say that C is compact if this function commutes with digit limits. Now, um, uh, the next definition is about generating sets. So I assume I have some set of objects. Uh, inside C. So I said that the, I say that the set is um, is generating.
uh, if the following uh, if the following is true, um, if um, um, so if the following holds. Um, so I assume I have some object Z, size C, and uh, I know that uh, maps from uh, uh, all objects of this uh, set uh, D uh, are zero. Uh, then uh, D is zero. So this is what it means to be generating sets. So again, spell it out. Uh, it simply means that when all maps from all objects of this family to something are zero, then the object must be zero. Um, okay, so now, uh, and the third definition is uh, here, uh, and present what the category is compactly generated. Uh, if there is a generating set if there is a generating set consisting of complex objects. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is um, oh maybe maybe one more thing. Um, um, so for a functor of uh, example the two categories, um, I say that it preserves compactness. Uh, if um, for any C inside C compact. Uh, the implication is that F of C inside C is also compact. Um, and um, maybe let me mention one more fact. Um, which uh, is quite important in, in this theory, um, that when uh, some f c to d is um, um, continuous and um, uh, preserves compactness, uh, this implies that um, uh, there exists a continuous right adjoint. So, of course, being continuous, uh, the functor uh, is also co limits, so the categories are presentable. So, by joint functor theorem, uh, it does have a right adjoint, but the right adjoint is not necessarily continuous. And it will be continuous even only if the functor preserves compact. Um, okay, so now let's talk about some uh, examples. Um, so we're saying it's only state, right? Yeah, you can yeah. see, yeah, you can say. Yeah. Okay, so examples. Um, Uh, the first example will be more like a general construction. Um, uh, let's say I have some small digit category. Um, and then I can always consider a presentable category given by incompletion. Okay. 
So now this is a presentable digit category, uh, and it's compactly generated by simply uh, all objects, uh, all images of the nether capital from A to the in completion. I say representables. Um, so also what um, uh, something you can do is if you have uh, some presentable category, you can associate to it um, the uh, category consisting of all compact objects. Um, Getting responded by complex. Um, and these two constructions are uh, taking into the small digit category and taking the category of um, uh, compact objects, they um, give all this given equivalence between compact generated digit categories and sort of small digit categories. Um, so that's a general. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, um, so one obvious example of a compact generated category is, um, say, quasi um, computer chips, because this is simply a category of modules in way. You can think of it um, as sort of end of so called B page. Namely, the DG category to the object and the endomorphisms given by, by A. Uh, uh, however, um, for uh, even with other fine schemes, uh, I, I don't know if this formula really makes it's like end of end is adjoining all filtered columns, but to get uh, mod A from B A, you have to adjoin all columns. All oh, right. So it's really more, it's the pre sheaf category actually in that case. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Um, wait, so what, so what other, like how do you read the huh? Compact objects are perfect classes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, just in the general, because like, if you build it as pre sheaf on this, you build this between compact objects. Well, not a, yeah, in this case, like the BA is some weird, it's not a GD category. So no, it's a GD with an with an option, but it's not additive. Yeah, so it's not, to, it's not it's not a DG it's not stable, for example. Ah, uh, okay. I mean I maybe I understand the GK is like that. Yeah. Just so the the magic space is done. Yeah. Yeah. But it also in this like, case it's it's end of perfect complexes. In the moment of not good. Um, so maybe with this, sorry, one other thing. You could say a mod A is compactly generated by A and it's it, it's shifts. By, by oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Technically, you just need to do negative shifts of A. If you use shifts in the definition number two here, then you don't have to say that. Uh -huh. Like you might want to say if you, it generates as a stable category if like all of the shifts generated as an abstract category or something like that. Yes. But, yeah. Um, anyway. Yes. There are there are various ways to say it. I don't necessarily <laughs> insist this, but. Um, Compact objects. Uh, I don't necessarily insist like generating set is a form of the GK frame, right? It's just small. So this definition makes sense for any case. You don't necessarily right. get there. Right. Um, uh, okay, so now uh, let X be uh, finite type in. Uh, and then sort of in code on X uh, is actually by definition. The means completion of the category of the hidden sheet uh, class. So, this is also a compact generated category. Um, notice, for instance, that um, for um, uh, quasi coherent sheets, for X, where X is the finite type scheme. Um, so, this category is also compact generated, but this is a not not inside the triangles here. Um, uh, 
this is you know bond out and one perfect one per clear. Is this usually attributed to Thomas and Trippo? Uh good question. Uh, they they proved it for like quasi compact quasi separated X. Um so so the bundle of red also proved for for quasi compact quasi separated. But I'm not sure if the if this if this exact theorem is in Thomas and Trevor. Yeah, maybe it's sort of uh maybe the main argument the main argument is there, but yeah, the it's, theorem itself maybe is not one. literally stated that way. Yeah, yeah. so anyway, fair enough. It's yeah. possible it was attributed to them. <laughs> I see. <laughs> but uh, it's it's also attributed to them, but um but I hope with Nikki also mentioned Thomas and Trevor, but I don't think this theorem is exactly there. Um, uh, yeah, so this is not entirely trivial theorem. Well, you have to, it's not very difficult, but you have to prove some to go by induction um, on the number of fine schemes covering X. And then there's some um, some additional uh, inductive argument that you have to do. So I just want to maybe uh, uh, give one uh, non example. Um, um, so there can be uh, categories, uh, presentable digit categories. Which arise as finite limits of compact generated, yet they are not compactly generated. Uh, finite limits of um, compactly generated uh, categories may not be compactly. Um, so one funny example is um, um yeah, okay, let's say um uh, we can consider some algebra um, with an ideal uh, such that uh, I swear to be equal to Uh Then there is going to be uh, mod A, uh, mod A over I, um, and there is a base change factor. Um, and this base change factor is kind of um, Try to close the close embedding of spec of A modulo I into spec A, but it also because of this condition somehow behaves like an open embedding. It turns out this is a localization. Uh, and so then there is some, some fiber. So both these categories are compactly generated and the function preserves compactness in order to be continuous, but it turns out that this is not uh, compactly generated. In fact, there are no uh, compact objects there besides one, besides, besides zero. So that's, that's an interesting phenomenon. Um, Okay, so now um, one more uh, last example, which is very important to us, is is the following. Um, yeah, the bottom board don't. But yeah, <laughs> well, I should not have used it anyway. But uh, forget about it. <laughs> um, May I ask, where are the compact objects for inco and buco? Oh, uh, for inco. No, for inco compact objects on the finite depth scheme is just by definition for given basis. This is by definition, this is the incompletion. But for, for so for here um, on the um, on the finite depth scheme, well, it turns out there is one there is one compact generator which generates the whole case here. But you have to construct it now. and um, uh, it's um, um, I think it's, it's so it's true that it's generated by perfect, perfect complexes yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. perfect form of a small perfect, perfect complexes are the are exactly the complex. Yeah, that's true. But so like you have to in order to prove that this is the case, you have to do some work. Uh, you have to maybe construct an explicit perfect complex, which generates the whole thing. And then in particular, perfect complexes also generate the whole thing. Maybe it's worth saying this is like much easier on like a quasi-projective, right? Yeah, quasi projective. Because then you can use like Serge theorem type stuff to generate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Wait, same same category of compact or subcategory of compact object can generate different. Say it again. 
So it's the same. We said that perfect complexes generate. Oh, sorry, they don't generate heat. They don't generate. Perfect, yeah, yeah, no, but unless the scheme is smooth. Yeah. yeah. Perfect equals code exactly. So, uh, so one example that's very important to us is um, uh, consider, say, um, uh, Z, um, maybe let's say even quite projective, um, and uh, G is some uh, a final dry group. Uh, um, Uh, acting on this thing. Then I can form the Gaussian stack. And the claim is that uh, infinite shapes uh, on this thing is completely generated. By code. Um, so let's. Like it, if it's a scheme, what is it? Quasi projective. Yeah, quasi projective scheme. Um, also, really quasi quasi compact quasi separated is enough, I think, but uh, quasi, quasi projective is what we will naturally encounter. Uh, so, um, yeah, quasi projective scheme, and I have the final by group acting on it. Let's say I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I should take characteristic zero. In fact, I think I should because let us like, yeah, characteristic P. Then it's, it's definitely false awesome characteristic P. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is in characteristic zero. This is passed through. We the take GA acting on a point in characteristic P. It's CGA, not, yeah. Not Although there is quasi coherent, quasi incoherent. It's the same. The same. So there's, yeah. So yeah, it's most. So it's and that that one has like no non-zero. Yeah, yeah. There are no topics. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is really in characteristic zero. Um, uh, just a few words about sort of why this is true. Um, let's say um, it's believable that, like, what does it mean to be um, uh, an input hidden sheaf, or just in general, a sheaf on the quotient stack? It's basically a sheaf on the original thing together with some data of uh, equivariance. And so it's believable that it's just a quasi hidden sheaf or an input hidden sheaf on, on Z together with some additional data. And if I get to one trace, sort of uh, conservative, preserves all the limits. Um, and uh, the caching is just monadic uh, over the uh, incoherent uh, sheets of on Z. But really, sort of in order to make this argument precise, I have to, there's a little bit of more work. I have to establish like smooth descent, for instance, for, uh, for incoherent sheets. And, um, and yeah, and this is only true when, uh, when we are in characteristic zero, because in characteristic zero, in a final right group, group is smooth. And uh, there is a smooth descent for incoherent sheets. Uh, so what fills for BGA? So in BGA, so in the case of, um, uh, yeah, so uh, um, the mark, say, uh, quasi computer chips on uh, BGA um, uh, times uh, step K, step of P. Um, uh, there's no compact objects. Yeah. So, uh, seemingly very simple group, but um, this is very much not the case in, in characteristic zero. In characteristic zero, BJ is what's called an affine stack. So, um, uh, compact generation is very sort of um, explicit, but. Um, but apparently in character speed, this is not this is not at all true. Um, okay, so if there's five, so I guess we need to yeah, make a break. Take a few minute break. Okay. Okay, so uh, now as we talked about uh the PNC, the modules and complicated case trace, I want to move to um, uh, into uh, the third part of the talk, namely uh, the two modules on uh, bandwidth.
Um, and I want to mention um, I want to mention one theorem which I'm not going to use, but it's um, uh, it's sort of useful to keep it in mind. Uh, so the theorem is also critical of Griffin to get for it. So I assume X um, uh, is a is a quasi compact step, quasi compact algebraic step. Um, such that uh, for any um, um, uh, field value point x or i, um, the uh, the uh, group scheme of isomorphism um, of i uh, is affine. Um, and then they prove that uh, for any stack of this form, uh, the category T modules. Uh, on Banji is uh, properly uh, generated. Oh, yeah, I should not have used this word again. Anyway, um, but the, the obvious problem is that um, uh, Banji. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the obvious problem is that um, uh, Banji. Uh, is not quite compact. Um, and therefore, it doesn't quite fit into the uh, framework of uh, the standard framework of uh, 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 of this uh, general theorem. It's not the kind of object for which we can expect that uh, with certainty that the case of the modules is going to be completely generated. Um, but it turns out nonetheless that uh, um, so for like how like the Grassmannian that will follow immediately. A fine Grassmannian uh, um, if you if you remind what a fine Grassmannian is you know. it is for any for any in scheme it's it's automatic because like Category D modules on an in scheme is the limit uh, of D modules on a bunch of like closed sub schemes on your street pullbacks. Mm -hmm. right? oh, and, and therefore, functions. well, you know, the, the point is those functors have left the joints, which is the direct image, because mm -hmm. the embedding, they're closed embeddings and therefore proper. And so it's also the co limit under direct images, the direct images for preserved compact objects. Uh -oh. So if you have a co limit of DG categories under functors for preserved compact objects, then it's a bad object. So it follows from the golden representation. So, um, uh, however, even though uh, maybe some of expected, um, uh, the following theorem is also beautiful. This is for it. Uh, the theorem says the following that uh, uh, Z mod of G. Is completely generated. And um, so that's not, it's not at all an obvious fact. Um, and uh, the idea why this happens is that uh, Banji has a particularly nice uh, stratification by quasi compact stacks. Um, uh, such that uh, all this all these inclusions into uh, all these inclusions of quasi compact struct into Banji um, have a certain nice uh, factoriality property with respect to push forward to the D modules. So I'm going to now uh, define uh, the following notion. Um, let's say. Why it's a quite a compact stack. Um, let's say, I guess I'll try it.
Um, and we have um, we have an open um, an open substrate J. So uh, the uh, inclusion uh, J um, your side. Y is called um, uh, called uh, truncated um, if so there is a number of equivalent conditions um, for being called truncated let me formulate uh, say two of them uh, if uh, uh, the function j uh, lower star uh, from t modules on U, um, so on um, the modules of Y uh, preserves compactness. Um, and you can check that uh, this is equivalent to um, uh, uh, that exists. which is that the joints uh, of uh, a G after star. So in the talk, uh, in Justin's talk, we discussed that um, there is a kind of partially defined uh, logic function, uh, which is defined on something like polynomial modules, um, et cetera. But um, uh, so here we say that uh, an inclusion of an, of, of an open substack is co-truncated if uh, this function is defined on the full case here. Um, and it's the left the train of the function G uh, have a start. Um, So, uh, also remark um, uh, if uh, uh, you decide why uh, is what you take it. Um, I say that the uh, complementary. Most um, substack uh, z inside y uh, is uh, truncated. And the, the properties of the existence of the data joint also uh, can be translated to some extraordinary functorialities um, for. Uh, uh, the modules in this closed up stack, the modules like. Um, so now, um, perhaps, uh, um, uh, an interesting remark is that, um, another interesting remark is that, uh, the uh, property of, um, uh, truncation, the support truncation is, is a fully stack phenomenon. It uh, very rarely happens for schemes. Um, so this is the reason. Uh, here's the reason. Uh, uh, suppose uh, um, uh, you inside Y uh, is an open and bearing schemes.
Um, um, so then um, um, I claim that um, uh, J uh, can't uh, be um, uh, for truncated unless um, uh, it is uh, ultra close. So what is the reason for this? Um, so when you have some open embedding, assume you have an open embedding, which is not closed. Uh, then in particular, it's not proper. Um, and there is a general fact that um, whenever the map is not proper, for proper maps, you know that um, there exists um, uh, direct image from coherent objects. Uh, but it turns out when the map is um, not proper, maybe uh, uh, with some additional conditions, uh, there are necessarily going to be um, uh, coherent shifts uh, on U, uh, which uh, don't uh, map to coherent shifts on Y under direct image. So, um, so find some. Um, yeah, one two um, coherent shifts on U, uh, such that uh, direct image. F uh, is not coherent. Um, then um, I can see them uh, uh, induction uh, in Z modules um, on Y of uh, this direct image. Um, and uh, by functionality of the term stack, uh, uh, this is the same as um, uh, direct image now taking the category of the modules of the induction uh, in the modules on U um, of, uh, of L. But now, if this is not coherent, in particular not uh, compact, then this is also not compact. And therefore, this, this one, even though it is compact on U, is not going to map to anything compact uh, on on uh, on why? Um, why why is it being preserved? Like a uh, in preserved number? Like why does like the other direction be fixed? That if, if um, something is not on end of that can compact either. Why is it? Um, end of something. Um. So yeah. So um. No, so so this functor it preserves um this functor int it preserves coherence, preserves compactness. It yeah. has a functor for incoherent shapes through T modules. Um and um just a second, so uh, uh, a good question. Uh you could say something with T structures, but it's kind of I mean, I think this kind of thing is much clearer for abelian categories. Like if I have a functor which has a which preserves compact objects and is moreover conservative, then I claim for abelian categories, like an object is compact if and only if its image under that thing is compact. So this is not true for derived categories, but because everything inside is sort of T exact, you can you can yeah. still do something with the derived. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good question. Yeah. So maybe yeah. Some a little bit more. But you can also imagine JLOR star is infinitely generated as a module, and somehow, like, when you tensor up with D, you're going to get infinitely many generators over P. Yes, it's it's like example of yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, we are talking about schemes, so this is just tensoring with the algebra differential operators. So this is not uh, finitely generated, therefore, D module is not finitely generated item. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, so what are some what are some examples of this phenomenon? Um, 
So there will be essentially one uh, main example. Um, uh, so consider this deck um, um, A1, um, one tree. So this will be our right. Uh, and as you, we will take um, A1 minus zero until the tree. So now this step is just a point. And, uh, and we have the open inclusion. You, um, let's say point, um, inside a one one chain. Um, so now, uh, uh, so here we are kind of um, dealing with uh, both the schemes that like the political space are just points. So there is no uh, there is no interesting holistic condition to impose, um, and then we can just check that. Um, uh, is defined. Uh, it's equivalent to uh, simply defining the uh, of uh, okay, basically. As an object in Z models in A1 OGM that is like uh, the universal property. Um, so therefore, therefore uh, J is put in K. Um, okay, so now, uh, so I gave a definition only in the case of quasi compact stacks. Um, um, so for now, uh, non quasi compact stack, why is some um, algebraic step not necessarily quasi compact? I say that again, the inclusion of new inside by open is quadricated. If um, for any uh, quasi compact uh, open um, by dot by uh, the intersection of this uh, dot inside dot uh, is uh, fortunately. Um, and um, the second part of the definition is um, I say that you know, the right stack is compatible if it can be presented uh, um, as um, the union of um, quite compact, um, quadrant heating, um, such as. Um, and I claim that the following, uh, I claim the following uh, theorem in the case when, uh, when uh, the stack is truncatable. Yeah. 
Uh, I think I will respond to it in a slightly different way than uh, to insert case body to. So I will say the following. Um, assume um, y is uh, the union of some uh, open quotient substance. Um, twice compact, and I, in addition, will assume that uh, uh, the modules on y i uh, is uh, compactly generated, say for some reasons, not for any quasi compact stack. Uh, the modules are going to be compactly generated, but assume we know this for whatever reasons. Uh, then I claim that. Uh, the module on the line um, is a uh, compact degenerate. Okay. Um, so proof, um, very simple. Um, so, so Y is, um, is a union of this um, Y I's. Um, therefore, D modules um, on Y, um, it's going to be equivalent to, well, say the limit um, overall I of uh, D modules on y i um, under under the uh, under the usual pullback, they are all open. They're just pull, pulling back in the uh, upper star set. Um, so what does it imply? So consider um, uh, all objects of the form. Um, J um, lower trip of F, uh, where J some inclusion um, sorry, I will have to call it J I. Um, the I is an inclusion of my I inside um, inside Y. Um, so consider all objects of this form. Um, so I claim that uh, they are uh, they form uh, a set of um, uh, compact generators of the category of the modules on Y. So for instance, why are they compact? Compact, compact objects. Yeah, where F is compact. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, where F. Um, yeah. So where F is modules. By I, uh, compact. So why is it so? For instance, why are they compact? So this factor is the left the joint of a continuous functor. So I mentioned uh, in the beginning that when this happens, um, the left the joint necessarily preserves compactness. So first, this object should be compact. Um, on the other hand, uh, assume that you have some uh, D module on Y such that uh, all mapping spaces from all objects all object of this form are zero. Uh, then by a junction, uh, by a junction, I can write e, uh, for some E, uh, D module on the Y. Um, uh, maps uh, from uh, J lower shriek. I F uh, or E, which I can write as maps uh, out of F uh, J uh, up J I up J F is zero. Um, sorry. Uh, um, so if all such such things are zero, then uh, in fact uh, 
e must be zero because uh, my category is presented as a limit. And uh, when I pull back to all these things, I get a zero of it. Therefore, it must be zero. So that proves compactness. This proves uh, that these objects again generate uh, uh, the category. Okay. So it's actually exactly the same argument I gave earlier for in schemes. It's just a slightly different context here, but it's we have a limit of compactly generated categories. The transition functors admit left of joints. Yeah. And therefore, it's a co limit. You can, yeah, you can write as a co limit. Left of joints, and therefore, it's compactly generated. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, okay, so um, um, so um, now uh, what uh, there is a good source of uh, uh, of uh, quadruncative uh, quadruncative substacks, namely uh, the notion that uh, Sasha Bellinson talked about. Uh, the notion of uh, contractors. Um, so recall uh, the following definition. Um, I, I will first say it in the in this case of schemes. Then uh, for for stacks, it will be sort of those which locally look of this uh, look like this. So for schemes, um, so I say the following that um, um, so I assume I have a uh, map which is uh, a fine. Uh, schematic, um, let's call it P. Um, and I also have an action of uh, GM on uh, W, uh, which is an action over S. So the action on S is trivial. Uh, in addition, um, sorry, I think I want to say not GM, but rather A1. The monoid A1 with respect to multiplication acts on this. Um, the action is over S, and um, and uh, in addition, I, I want to require that uh, zero inside A1 uh, factors uh, like this. Um, um, so I have W, I have projection, and I want to have some. Um, zero section. So, um, so I have the endomorphism uh, corresponding to zero. I want it to factor like this. Um, um, so then, um, uh, so I define um, uh, y as uh, w. Um, Um, so just so um, so really um, an action of a one uh, you can think of it in particular as an action of GM, right? So it's a monoid that it contains the the subgroup GM. So I can take the quotient of W modular GM, um, and in addition I take um, um, Z. The quotient of S by GM, but the GM action on, on S is just trivial. So it's the same as SS times uh, AGM. Um, and then we have a closed embedding um, of, uh, of D inside, um, inside uh, Y. Um, So I actually didn't write it in my notes, but I think it's what it's, this is what Sasha calls a contractive close embedding, or maybe the complementary open substack is contractive. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a contractive in this session, yeah. So um, I think this is called contractive substack, um, unless uh, unless I'm confusing it with the complementary open embedding. But anyway, I hope you you get the idea. So the setting is like this. Um, and uh, expectedly, the theorem is going to be the next theorem is going to sound like this. Uh, um, 
Um, so in this situation, the inclusion side y uh, is uh, truncated. What does it mean truncated? That the complementary open subset is quadruncated. And um, quadruncated means that exists J lower shriek. Um, okay, so uh, let's sketch the proof. Okay. Um, right, so, um, so in this situation, I said that the morphism is a fact. Therefore, I can write uh, W as uh, the square. Um, of some uh, quadratic field in the S algebra. Uh, in, in addition, uh, the action uh, of A1 uh, gives a, a non negative gradient. So if you write A, um, as the sum of the traded pieces. And this is a graded, this is a graded uh, commutative uh, algebra in quadratic field sheets on S. Um, so now there's going to be uh, a number of reductions. Uh, for instance, I can assume that um, um, uh, can assume uh, A is generated by some uh, um, uh, weight component in, in weight M. Um, and then uh, moreover, um, it's then going to be um, uh, I can embed this a, a n inside um, uh, inside some uh, uh, some vector bundle, um, and then uh, I can present w um, uh, as a, a conical subscheme, meaning J M covariant subscheme, um, of some uh, v uh, vector bundle. Uh, over S. So this vector bundle is going to be this vector bundle over S, but the action of GM is not the standard one, but rather uh, GM acts by uh, weight M. Uh, um, so GM acts by, by weight M. So let's say for any vector bundle, uh, there is a standard action of GM, but then I precompose it with the Morphism uh, on GM, uh, raising everything to the power M. So this is the setting. Um, okay, so uh, uh, this is this, and then um, um, and so then S is just uh, the zero section uh, inside V. So now what I do is I then take um, uh, lower. Um, of uh, 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 with respect to uh, this uh, flow subset. So it's going to be flow up in uh, zero of um, um, And so now this contains, um, uh, this contains and uh, uh, um, so, um, so, uh, let's call this, uh, F, and I, I can take, um, a pre image of, um, of uh, zero tilde. The image of the close of scheme corresponding to the zero section. And so I consider, um, consider this. Um, but then uh, this blow up, it's um, this blow up is a, uh, is a line bundle, is a total space of a line bundle over projective space. Uh, and this is the inclusion of the zero section. So uh, it follows that I can reduce my theorem to simply. Uh, showing that um, uh, it holds for uh, all line bundles over arbitrary basis. 
inclusion of zero on any line model on another shoe basis, based based on um, So uh, then, yes, see them to line on this. Uh, but then again, locally, um, any line bundle is trivial. Um, so uh, locally, this question is simply the question about um, uh, Of, um, yes, that's the GM inside um, uh, S times uh, A1 modular GM, uh, even though GM now acts by the by weight M. Uh, this is slightly different action from what I discussed before. Um, and uh, so, um, with any base, um, base S. Um, oh, by the way, there is something I didn't say, right? Uh, there is something I didn't say. Um, uh, so, why does, why does uh, truncativeness of this imply truncativeness uh, of the uh, original thing? Well, so it turns out that um, um, so Jinter Grace Gore, they prove some uh, some statement of the forms that we have here. Um, basically, what's used is the fact that uh, blow up is the smooth projective map uh, down to V and sort of then truncativeness, uh, uh, truncativeness upstairs implies truncativeness downstairs. Um, Right, so, um, yeah, so, but now uh, reducing to this, and then um, I have to, to go to any S, however, sort of by, um, uh, by stability of, um, say, by the fact that input here and shifts or D modules on the product is the same as the tensor product of uh, D modules on the, um, on each component, um, it follows that I can just prove it for, um, Yes, we go to step K, uh, and this will be sufficient. Uh, but in this case, this is something that people have already understood. Namely, it's the inclusion of uh, PGM as the A1 one GM, and any module uh, VI in the following setting where the function J logic is just defined in the whole case. Um, so this would be uh, the end. Okay, so now uh, let me say how does this apply to uh, bungee? Um, so again, we call. Um, Um, bungee. Sorry, maybe let me give one more definition, uh, but it will be like very big. Because uh, uh, I don't have that much time, but basically the uh, the idea is that we can now define quadrantativeness uh, for a map of steps. Um, say, uh, you move for contraction, sorry. Uh, you uh, inside wide uh, and open and then on the algebraic steps um, and is uh, 
um, contracted if um, um, if the corresponding um, close um, complement um, C on side I um, locally form hardware um, I mean, this situation. So, again, what locally means, I don't think I can uh, clarify this right now. Um, uh, but you can give a simple, uh, a, a similar criterion to what happened for fine schemes for stacks as well. And this will be the notion of uh, quadrancated substack. Okay, so now, uh, so how does this all apply to Bungie? So uh, from Balinson's talk, Bang Jin um, had a certification uh, by uh, uh, from Chuck Sutton. Um, so these uh, uh, quasi compact open subsets um, inside G, um, satisfying, um, we should define in terms of some conditions on the uh, co weight. Um, so let me um, uh, let me not specify these conditions right now, but basically the idea is that uh, Ban G is stratified by. Contractive strategy, which are somehow constructed explicitly using uh, some games with uh, co weights. Um, um, and um, um, right, so now, um, so given this, um, it follows that um, um, the band that Banshee um, uh, is uh, truncatable, it's uh, stratified by. Um, uh, so quite compact open subsets such that which are contracted and therefore co-truncated uh, using this uh, this proposition. And then sort of maybe um, one more thing to say to be consistent is um, um, so we need to know that this uh, all these uh, categories uh, of T modules on these guys are compactly generated. Um, but this we can do using uh, the fact the um, the address of G. I and mean, the has an atlas of um, uh, by stacks of the form a quasi projective scheme modular and the final dry group action. And uh, then any quasi compact stack uh, uh, necessarily lies uh, in such a uh, chart. Um, and being open there, uh, compact generation of, uh, uh, of, of, of stacks of the form quasi projective modular and the fine algebraic group implies. Compact generation of D modules uh, on this thing. And then by the previous argument that I erased somewhere there, uh, it follows that uh, D modules on Banshee is also compact generated. Okay, well, I guess that's uh, that's it. No. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so questions? much. Uh, yes, yeah, you mentioned again that you can present Bungie the quotient. No, no, not Bungie, but like Bungie has an atlas. Uh, yeah. Has an atlas consisting of sort of disjoint unions, increasing disjoint unions of oh, schemes okay. of the form quasi projective modular, yeah. uh, modular final the right action. And how did you show that that's compactly generated using the contractive? Um, so contractive mean implies uh, truncatedness. Okay. Uh, or co-truncatedness. Okay. Co co uh, and now when you have truncatable, so I, I um, had uh, this proposition a little earlier that 
Fortune and Truncatable stack uh, has a compact generated category of T modules. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's written here. Any other questions from Zoom? Are there any questions? Okay, well, let's see. Thank you, Secretary. Okay.